In this video I will show you how to use a splitting method, for instance the Jacobi method, inside the conjugate gradient method to get an even improved method, the so-called preconditioned gradient method. Hi, my name is Frank and welcome on my channel. What's the aim of this video? Um, we start with a linear system, Ax equals b, and we assume that A is a symmetric and positive definite matrix, hence the conjugate gradient method is a suitable method for solving such problems. However, the CD method can be improved by using splitting methods inside the conjugate gradient method as a preconditioner, hence the name preconditioned conjugate gradient method. What you should already know to understand this video, of course you should know what is the conjugate gradient method and of course you should know what's the idea behind splitting method, for instance you have the Jacobi method or if you go a little bit more advanced the SSOR method because we will use them inside our, our uh, conjugate gradient method. To simplify our notation we use the following, if you have an expression like left bracket x comma y right bracket this is just the standard scalar product, so it's just x transposed y. If we use this notation, we can write our conjugate gradient method as the following. We start with an arbitrarily chosen space, a vector x0 in the space Rn, and compute the following terms. You can see them here. That's just the, the most common notation of the conjugate gradient method. And the question is now, how are we gonna improve this method? And the trick is, we are not improving the method itself, we are improving the underlying problem. So keep in mind what, um, what do we want to solve. We want to solve the, the system Ax equals b. And if you do a little bit of convergence analysis of the conjugate gradient method, you will see that the convergence speed is heavily influenced by the condition number of the matrix A. In fact, the smaller the condition number of A, the faster is the, is the, um, is the algorithm. Because if the condition number of A is large, then the matrix A is called um, ill-posed. And this gives a lot of issues, especially when it comes to numerical errors. So the idea is, can we solve an equivalent system which has a better convergence a condition number? So for simplicity, for instance, multiply a matrix C from, from the left side to solve this system. In an optimal way, C should be chosen to be A because then we actually ob obtain the, the, the solution, but this is kind of useless because, well, <laughs> for obvious reasons. So um, C should be chosen that the condition number of, of C minus A is C inverse A is small. However, we run into problems because C inverse times A is usually not symmetric and far away of being positive definite. So we cannot simply apply the conjugate gradient method. However, we can, uh, we can apply an additional transformation, which looks like this. So C inverse A is the same as here, but now we are plugging in a um, identity here. So C minus transpose, C transpose. We will see in a second why we need this matrix to be transposed here. Because now we can reformulate this equation, which is of course equivalent, if C is, is a regular matrix, to Ax equals B. So let's do a little bit of a reformulation. And we set A tilde to be this term, X tilde to be this term, and B tilde to be this expression here. If we do so, we can rewrite this um, extended equation to the following system. So A tilde, X tilde is equal to B tilde with this notation here. And of course, if A is symmetric and positive definite, then of course A tilde will be symmetric and positive definite. You can just, well, calculate it. This means we can apply our conjugate gradient method to this extended modified system. And the hope is that this will result in a better scheme. So let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at it. The conjugate gradient method for this extended system looks exactly like the same except that we have tildes all overall variables, but otherwise we are in the same situation. So nothing spectacular happens here. But now we can ask ourselves, how are these both algorithms connected? And for instance, we can do the following calculation. So we start with the residual coming from the modified system. So R tilde K, which is of course B tilde minus A tilde X tilde K. 
So let's use our definition. We know B tilde is C inverse times B. And A tilde is C inverse times A times C inverse transpose and so on. And if we do a little bit of recalculation, so um, just uh, put C minus one out of this equation and um, then you see um, these terms cancel out here and you see that we end up with C minus one B minus A X K. So there's no tilde here. But B minus A X K is exactly R K. So this is the residual uh, coming from the uh, from the algorithm for where we started from. So we have the relation that R tilde K is exactly C minus one times R, R tilde K. Or even more interesting, if we define the following vector, this will be important, that's why I stress on this definition here. W K is defined to be the inverse of C transposed times D tilde K. So D tilde K is the search, di search direction of the Conian credit method applied for the extended system. If you do the following calculation, compute C transposed XK plus one. So XK plus one is coming from the original algorithm. This is of course by definition X tilde K plus one. And by definition, this is the iterative method, you can see it here. But now we use our definition of WK to get an extra C transposed in it here. That's why this WK is defined in this unusual or weird way. Because now we can just cancel out C transpose or to be more precise, we can multiply this equation with Z inverse transpose and we end up with the following condition or the following relation. We know that the, iterate, that the iterates of the original algorithm, so x k plus one without tilde can actually be computed as um, alpha tilde k coming from the modified algorithm times the modified search direction. And this is interesting because, well, you will see in a moment. If you do the math, you will end up with the following six relations, which combines the two algorithms. So keep in mind, we have this weird definition of uh, the search direction w k. The first relation I just showed you, which is just uh, plugging in definitions. I showed you the this relation here, and of course you can do you can establish relations for alpha tilde and for beta tilde. And um, well, don't be afraid; they might look technical, but they are just plugging in definitions and uh, shifting terms from one side to the other. What is interesting here? We have a reoccurring term here, namely C inverse terms transposed times c minus one. This term appears here, 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 and here. So let's replace this c minus transpose c minus one by, let's call it a matrix P for obvious reason. So P is defined to be c times c transpose. Then we can rewrite alpha tilde k with this term here, which is of course just P inverse. And now we do a little bit of a trick we put p minus one times rk out of the equation. We introduce an additional additional vector, which is called zk. And zk is exactly p minus one times rk. So I marked it here in red, so you can see it better. Um, if we do so, we can rewrite alpha tilde k to be the following expression here. And similar, we can do it for beta tilde k, where the expression here also appeared here. So we introduce, um, so introducing this variable set k is a little bit of a help to get um, an overview of the notation here. And we will now, we are, we are ready because we have now replaced the matrix C, which was arbitrarily or to be, uh, which was given at the beginning, so it had to be a, um, a, a bit of a regular matrix. We have replaced this matrix C in the preconditioned CG method because it doesn't appear here. It's completely, completely um, um, put inside the matrix P, and we do not even use the matrix P. We only use the vector ZK and define ZK to be this vector here. So that's why I wrote here to be more precise. We replaced it with the vector Z. So why is this useful? Well, now. Here's the definition or the, uh, the formulation of the precondition conjugate traded method. For clarity or for simplicity, we drop the tildes of alpha tilde k or beta tilde k 
because we are only working with alpha tilde k and beta tilde k. We are not working with alpha k from the coming from the original method. So don't don't be don't be confused by this. If we plug in all our our results we have obtained so far, we know we have these relations here. If you write them down, those four equations or those six equations, if you take these alpha k and beta k, um, if you count them, then you see that the only difference to the original conjugate graded method are the parts I marked in red. These are the only difference. These are the only 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 uh, positions where they differ from the original algorithm. And the interesting, most interesting additional equation. Is, this, is, is the equation zk plus 1, which contains the inverse of the matrix P. So you only have to compute this expression zk plus 1 only one time, and then you can re 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 reuse it. So the only additional effort compared to the original conjugate graded method is the computation of one linear system. And this is, well, this is quite cheap. This is something you, that's something you can afford. Because you will see, it will bring a lot of lot of performance inside the conjugate graded method for basically nothing. But how do we choose the matrix P? The matrix P has to satisfy certain properties. For instance, uh, if you multiply it with the matrix A, the condition number should be decreasing because this was our in intuition or in our our main starting point. Um, on the other hand, if we want to solve this, if you want to compute a vector set. Um, the, the system P, Z, is R should be easily computed. And similar assumptions to our, our matrix had been made in the derivation of the splitting methods. So why, do, why aren't we going to use the, the, the uh, splitting methods? Thinking about the easiest splitting method, um, the Jacobi method should come into, into your mind. Here you can see the Jacobi method. And the idea is now, Instead of really formulating the matrix P, we just simply perform several steps of the, of the Jacobi method. So if we want to perform L number of the Jacobi method, well, okay, you can write down the matrix. I did it for you. You can see it here with the, with the uh, splitting of A into a diagonal part and lower part and a right upper part. Um, but of course, you are not. You will never ever compute this matrix here. You will, of course, apply the um, the the uh, definition of the Jacobi method in in the um, in a vector form, of course. So, but how does this influence our our method? Well, here's a numerical example. Um, we use the following uh, matrix. You can see it here. It's um, it, it has two on the diagonal and minus one on the um, uh, lower and, and upper diagonal, otherwise it is zero. Uh, B is chosen to be like this. This is of course is an interesting matrix. This matrix is symmetric positive definite and it has certain properties. It comes from the finite element, um, from numerics of finite elements. So therefore it's, it's a very interesting matrix and uh, you will see them a lot in the literature. So it's a good matrix to test our our condition, our preconditioned, um, our conjugate gradient method with the Jacobi preconditioner. Uh, N is set to be 500, so we have a 500 times 500 matrix. And to um, see some some influence of the of the uh, Jacobi method, we stop when the residuum is well is very small. And the question is, how many iterations do we need, depending of the number? Of Jacobi of Jacobi steps used in the preconditioner, and here are the results. If we start with the basic uh, version of the conjugate graded method, so L is zero, so we do not use any preconditioner at all. We need 250 steps to get the residuum as small as we want to. But even if you perform uh, three steps of the Jacobi method, you can reduce it by nearly a hundred iterations or to be precise 90 90 iterations which is a lot if we go to to uh, to 10 iterations you only need like you need less than 50 percent of the iterations and of course if you increase the number of Jacobi ste Jacobi steps inside the preconditioner you will need less and less iterations of the preconditioned um, uh, conjugate created method so this is interesting 
Um, just by using the very, very simple Jacobi method as a preconditional, you have a huge impact or you see a lot of um, impact inside the gradient method. And this is nice because only by solving an additional linear system and doing some reformulation, you get a new improved conversion, uh, con converging scheme. Well, it's nice, isn't it? So this is the end of the video. Um, I showed you how with some simple modifications to the underlying uh, system, the convenient gradient method can be extended to use a um, preconditioner and uh, iterative methods, uh, splitting methods like the Jacobi method are very suitable for the choice of a preconditioner because they are super fast. They can be implemented very, very in a very efficient way and they will give actually quite good results. Of course, you can move on to more advanced splitting methods like the SSOR method. So I did not choose the SOR method because the resulting um, um, iterative method from the SOR method is not symmetric positive definite, but the SSOR, which is a symmetric SSOR, just can be used. So, but in fact, a lot of different algorithms or splitting methods can be used as a preconditioner. In fact, it doesn't have to be a splitting method. I just choose them for for um, uh, for convenience because they are the most popular popular ones but you can use whatever you want to so um, if you have any questions feel free to comment me write write me in the comments and well have fun and cheers